CMP TV. I'm Trevor Canings. And I'm Nick Markey. And today we're going to be going over some preseason coverage of our first tournament season here at CMP Tactical Laser Tech. We have a huge history of tournaments here at CMP. We've had 15 of them in our past, along with a squad competition, but we've never done a season before. Now, Nick, can you explain to us what exactly a season of laser tag is? Well, a season is actually going to be something a little bit more than an individual event. Uh, we've done individual events in the past, and once they're done, we've got our winner there. The season's actually going to take four separate tournament events, and at the end of each tournament, uh, depending on where you rank, the teams will be, get, uh, be given points. At the end of the season, whichever team has the most cumulative points will be crowned our first season champion. All right, and uh, we'll be doing two different events this season. We'll be doing Tactical uh, Search and Destroy and Siege. Uh, we've done Siege before, but we've never done a two-box variant, which is what we'll be doing this season. Now, Nick, could you describe a little bit what two-box Siege is? Absolutely. Uh, Two-box Siege is a, a little bit of a variation of our normal Siege game, which is a little bit of a variation of a total defense game here. Two-box Siege will have one team uh, who will be defending. They'll have one single life. Their objective is going to be to hang on to two boxes for as long as they can. They'll be hiding these boxes anywhere inside the Urban Warfare Arena. The offense, with unlimited lives, will just have to clear them out, find the boxes, and retrieve them as quickly as possible. All right. This should be an interesting game to watch. All right, I'd like to talk about some of the teams that will be competing in this event. Um, I think we should lead off with one of the bigger stories, and this happened in just the last week. We saw the dissolution of Teenage Dream. They were actually a, a large part of our tournament scene for quite a while. They had five podium finishes. They're a, a strong team. They came in first place out of the squad competition in Lake Geneva. Just, just a very strong team. But uh, I don't think anybody saw it coming, but they're actually not going to be competing in this tournament. They uh, dissolve. Uh, Nick Dooley and CJ, they have gone to a new team, and this new team also features some other powerhouse players of uh, Chris Johnson. Uh, we have Leonard Miranda and Jacob Kalis. So it's a, it's a very strong team. What do you think of this team, Nick? Uh, definitely. One thing that's to the remember there is that CJ Guerrero and Nick Dooley off Teenage Dream very good players. You have to remember that everybody on Teenage Dream, when they showed up at the tournament scene, they are automatically on the podium. You know, everybody talks about their second place streak finishes, you know, and how well they did for so long, but that's consistency out of those guys. They teamed up with Leonard and Jake off of, you know, they've kind of had a mixed match of teams going in, but those two guys work together very well. You throw in the wild card Chris Johnson and suddenly you have a powerhouse team to deal with out there. One interesting fact about these players out there, combined, all of them, they're a lot of veteran players are. They have 31 total podium finishes here, so they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. I do believe they're going by the team named Ronin now, which is uh, kind of the little standout there, so to speak, uh, kind of just assembling all together there at once. I definitely think they're going to be a team to keep your eyes on, something to look out for. A lot of very offensive-minded uh, players there, especially with a player like Chris Johnson, who can go out there and create the confusion with somebody like CJ. And you have a guy like Leonard on the team who can really form a game plan. If they can get moving on the same page, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with out there. I think, uh, I think on paper, they're, they are one of our strongest teams here. Um, I think their, their big, uh, big thing that might pull them back is the fact that they haven't worked together ever and so their, their teamwork might be a little bit lacking compared to some of the teams that, that have worked together a few tournaments or uh, have a stronger core that have been together. But uh, how do you think they'll do with that? Uh, well, it's going to be hard. And you take a look at older teams in the path, like Team Angry, for instance. Those are the team of guys who worked and played together constantly, and they got everything down. And as you know, they won three straight tournaments. They're our first team to ever pull off a complete three-peat with the same members on the team. So something like that is going to be working against them here. It's going to be a little hard for them. We might see a shaky start to the season, uh, especially going into week one and week two as they figure out the individual games. But as they get everything down, I have no doubt that they, uh, they will actually understand as soon as they start working on the same page, uh, they probably could sweep you know, the rest of the seasons out there if they can work together though. But like I said, with no practice in front of them, they're going to have a hard time getting into it right away, especially in week one and week two. Right. And we actually caught up with some of the players of Ronin. We're going to take it live to Rick Larkey. All right, guys, I am here with a uh, kind of surprise tournament team here. I'm speaking with uh, Leonard, Jacob, CJ, and Nicholas down there. They are a uh, team up. Actually, you know what? I really don't know too much about you guys. Uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves real quick here? Uh, my name is Leonard Miranda, 
Um, what, what about your team? Now, now, what, what is this collection of team right here? We, we understand that, Leonard, you've been a, you're a long-time tournament veteran here. You've, won it, you've played in a lot of events here, a lot of podium finishes for you. Uh, what, what's going on with this new team here? I, I am, I'm looking down at the end here, at the end of the line here, and I'm seeing a few guys off Teenage Dream. Uh, what's happening here? Well, I think for all of us, our team just kind of uh, fell apart. Mm -hmm. And we're just kind of, uh, uh, you know, a coagulation of broken teams and it's actually coming together for something that's actually a pretty, actually one of the strongest teams, I would say. Awesome. Now, uh, you guys worried at all. I know, uh, Leonard, you kind of take the role of a, a strategist for your team. Uh, you kind of were sort of a team captain. CJ, you kind of did the same thing there. Are you guys worried about conflicting strategies or abilities of the players going forward, CJ? Well, uh, I'm hoping to develop the same kind of environment we had on Teenage Dream, where there's no real captain necessarily, but you know everybody has their own input and everybody has, uh, everybody's ideas are respected the same. That's good. That's good. Now, one thing that was kind of unique about Teenage Dream is in the fact that they didn't really have a team captain. But going forward, they were all kind of more of an offensive uh, unit, so to speak. Everybody was constantly uh, and more of an offensive style, real aggressive gameplay. Leonard, your teams have been known to kind of be a little bit more uh, mid, kind of stay back and uh, kind of let the other team make mistakes and move in. Do you guys think you guys will encounter any problems with that? Well, if... If, if, if it's a good strategy, I, we'll try to do it. I mean, it. our team, um, skill-wise, I think our our team is probably the strongest team mm -hmm. in the in the in the season. Um, so we should be able to bully our way in a couple of games, but uh, we will still consider our strategies. Oh, <laughs> All right, boys. Well, thank you for your time. Good luck. Good luck going into the first season. Back to you. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. I think we'll go into another big name team here. Uh, we're going to talk about Till Death. They're actually uh, probably the team to beat now, since they, they consist of a core of uh, Lan Chen, who's, uh, who's been in our tournament scene for a very long time, since the very beginning with uh, Team Angry, then he kind of created some of his own teams and now has found his place uh, as the team leader of this uh, Till Death. Uh, they have a little bit of a core of four members, here it is Lon, Kari, Alonzo, and Lara. That's the core that won uh, a horny, horny goat tournament. And then uh, they, this core added on a few more peoples and actually won our last siege tournament. Uh, so they have a little bit of an advantage there. Uh, Nick, what do you think of this team? Uh, definitely winning a siege tournament is going to give them momentum going into week one of the first season here. Uh, they kind of understand how the tournament will be working. And the four guys, the four players on their team, you know, Lon, Kari, Alonzo, and Lara, They've all worked together before, and they they have that experience of working together. And if you've watched them play, they do have very experienced call signs. They guys they do put in a lot of practice. So I think those four players right there working together are going to be a little bit of a problem out there for every single team to deal with. Now, uh, as we said, they have kind of a core of four players, and I think that. Uh, those four probably have the best communication of any of the teams here, probably hands down just because they put in the time for it. But uh, how do you think they'll do slotting in those other players? Uh, will they have to bench one of those those other four? And uh, will that work for them? You think they've got enough practice in for it? Uh, well, one thing that has yet to honestly be determined yet, because we haven't seen uh, really too much of the dynamic work together yet. Uh, Till Death is the only team actually that we have we know in advance right now that actually has teams uh, as team size above five, so they actually are able to substitute and bring in players inside specific events. Uh, their regular player that they brought in through the last siege tournament, I do believe, who's still with them, would be Nico. And Nico obviously is an incredible player out there. But also sitting waiting for them, they have Jacob Erdman, and they also have Rafi, Rafi, Mr. MVP, obviously. Jacob Erdman, who also won for one of our tournaments, I do believe that was the two versus two Thursday night throwdown. Yep. Uh, that dynamic that they'll have working together with them, and maybe they have to bring out offensive players and, and uh, side games in terms of defense. We'll have yet to see that happen, but I do think that uh, with that kind of roster and that working with them, they'll be able to uh, kind of figure out what they need to do per individual game there, and I think they'll have a very a better shot of getting it done more so than other teams that are going to be sticking with five and kind of eliminating their options. Yep, a strong team there, and uh, actually, oh, we have uh, Rick out in the field again. He'll be interviewing Ghost. Hi, this is uh, Rick Larkey, action reporter here at CMP Tactical Laser Tech. I am here with. Jason, and Jerry, and you guys are what part of what team here? Ghost. Ghost. Now uh, we're heading into preseason here for our first uh, season of tournaments here. Uh, 
real quickly, guys, what roles do you guys play in your team? Um, we really don't have roles. We have uh, we have people that just push fo forward, and uh, when we when we make decisions, we make it as a group. Uh, so you guys would say you run without a team captain, so to speak. Uh, with that being said, guys, going into the first game here, I do believe our first game is going to be two-box siege. It's a real exciting game. has a lot of possibilities for a lot of changes out there. What are you guys doing in terms of game plan, trying to figure out what's going to be happening out there? <laughs> um, what we plan on doing is, like, uh, I seen, like, last session there was a team that uh, they put both of the boxes together. We don't plan on doing that. I feel like uh, if, you put, if you put the box separate, it wastes more time for the other team to look for it. So our plan is to keep the box separate. But we don't know where we're going to put them. Definitely, definitely understandable, especially with any changes that could be made to the arena before the games actually take place in week one out there. Now, uh, you guys are currently running at a five-man roster. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Uh, who would be the five people on your roster? Um, me, Jerry, Wessum, Mustache Mike, and um, gotcha. Brian uh, that Weber. said, you guys don't have any substitutions or anything like that no. ready, prepared, or anything like that uh, going into there uh, or anything like that, or the strict five-man. Uh, with that being said, are you worried about other teams and other strategies that they do have a little bit more depth, a little bit more uh, players they can sub in on offensive and defensive sides? Um, yeah, but no, because uh, I feel like R5 is very solid. Good luck in the tournament. Back to you. Thanks, Rick. That, that Rick Larkey, hard worker and extremely handsome. Yeah. We had some good insight there on Ghost, and I think that's the next team that we should uh, go into here. They're uh, a pretty new team. Although uh, the core group of people there was, did play in our squad competition, they took second place, but in my opinion, it was a very strong second place. Uh, they lost to Teenage Dream, who, who knew the field like the back of their hands. And actually, most of Ghost was completely new out there. And uh, I think that's what impressed me the most, was that they were able to, to get such a strong second place. Um, especially Jerry and Brian out there really, really impressed me. Jerry was always on the objective, always accomplishing things, just, just doing work out there. And uh, Brian is, is, Brian's the type of guy that, that out in the, the squad competition was literally rolling in the dirt for his team. He's, he's a guy who will who'll do anything that, uh, that needs to happen for that team. They've, they've got a good group of people. Uh, what do you think of their team, Nick? Uh, well, when I see Ghost, uh, they formed together, they came together and created a team. Uh, it's one of those things that when you see a guy come onto a roster, you see a team come together, you know that something's going to click. And that really proved, uh, really proved itself to be true in the squad-based competition. You had Jason really take command of the field out there, even though it was his completely first time out there. He didn't really understand it too much, but he was still effectively communicating and with And uh, I, I believe he had a lot of allergies that day, you know, too, so even <laughs> despite that. Uh, that's definitely one thing about them. You know, Jason became a field leader. He really put himself out there. And uh, Brian Weber, as you said, literally rolling out there, putting out on the team. They're a team that when they come together and they work together, they're going to be very, very hard to beat. Uh, the only question that really raises about me is that they all really work together as a team, but I'm going to be very interested to see their solo situations out there. In a game like Siege or a game like Tactical Team Deathmatch, when they're finally, uh, you know, or Tactical Search and Destroy, my apologies. When you get down to one player or two players left, and suddenly you can't rely on your teammates too much. It's kind of unproven, so to speak, out there. So that's something to kind of keep an eye for, you know, watch you know, as the tournament season rolls on. Another thing to note on this, t this uh, roster, uh, Jerry did, in fact, take first in our last uh, Siege tournament. He was a part of Till Death. He's now obviously no longer a part of that team. Uh, he formed this new team here. And uh, so he has some experience with the format. I think he could emerge as a, a sort of strategic leader. But uh, outside of that, uh, Wassam is also a very big leader. He could emerge as a sort of a, a team leader there. Uh, a guy who, who you can always hear him in the arena just Absolutely. shouting to, to his teammates uh, crucial information. So they've got, a, they've got a good group of people who know how to work with other people. And I think, I think they'll do really well working with each other, despite being a, a little bit of a new team, a little bit of a, a wild card here in this, this season. The, the one thing we're really going to have to watch out for is Ghost as well. We're going to have to finally see the play on the competitive level of uh, Mr. Mustache Mike himself. This will be his first uh, you know, tur live tournament event here. He's actually going to be playing in the, all four weeks of the season here. They don't really have anybody to sub it for him. He's a great player on open sessions. A lot of people know and recognize him out there, but he's yet to prove himself in a tournament-style format. I think they're going to really have to kind of coach him up 
stay on him. And uh, if they can do that, you know, obviously he'll, he'll be a part of the team and work him in there. But if uh, it's not clicking right away, they may have to sign somebody else up and get somebody in there for him. And uh, another thing to note, these, these guys have actually practiced uh, a good amount compared to some of the other tournament teams. So uh, they might have some good uh, cohesion there. But we'll see. Uh, now I think we have another interview ready for uh, Rick Larkey here. I'm with Team High Hopes. You guys are missing a member uh, today here, guys. Uh, with that being said, guys, who uh, do you guys have a team captain at all? Anybody I should be speaking to about this? No. I don't think we have any. Talk to my Rasta DJ. <laughs> Rasta DJ. Now, DJ, uh, with that being said, you guys going into the first season here, you guys got four games, two games of Siege, two games of Tactical Search and Destroy. You guys got any special game plans laid out or anything, uh, any strategies you guys have been working on getting ready and prepared for this? Ooh, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you that just yet. I think you're going to have to wait and see. Other people are going to see this, and I don't want them to learn my strategies. Well, you, uh, with that being said, then it does sound like you guys are, in fact, working on a strategy. Uh, with that being said, do you guys have a preference on what games you guys would like to be playing? I mean, I don't really think it matters what game we play. We're going to play as a team. We're going to crush, you know? Play to win the game. That's very, very important. Now, uh, out there, you guys will have five members out there at all times, obviously. Each each game will have five players on the field. Do you guys are starting to sink into what roles you'll be playing? It's uh, not a very big secret that, obviously, Justin, uh, yourself, and DJ have played together through multiple tournaments. You guys have a core group working with you. And now that you bring on Julia and Anthony, are you guys kind of figuring out where your teams will be set in positions and what your game plan and styles are going to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody has a role, you know. Everybody uh, has a strong suit, and we're gonna play to that. You know, we've uh, we've talked about uh, where everybody is is strongest, and uh, even where people are weak. You know, and we're gonna adjust to uh, to do our best out there. You know. Now, one of the uh, big talks about there is that we're going to be having a lot of high-level play for the next four weeks. Uh, I uh, always high, always high level here with high hopes. Here, back to you. Thanks, Rick. Uh, that was high hopes, and uh, Dan is clearly excited to play in this mm -hmm. this tournament season. They've got a pretty good team there. They've got a good core group who've worked together throughout a lot of our tournaments. In uh, Dan, Justin, and uh, DJ, uh, they've also added Anthony in a few tournaments, and he's been here in the in the tournament scene for quite a bit too. And uh, recently, their, their latest addition to fill out that fifth was Julia. And uh, she took third place once and a first place in our total domination tournament. Uh, what do you think about this team, Nick? Well, definitely one thing that I want to talk about here is that everybody on High Hopes here, they are extremely fired up. They are ready to play. You watch these guys play in any kind of practice or any kind of open play session, they are fired up. They are ready to go at all times. You know, these are guys definitely who don't really take shortcuts, don't really play slow down. They don't really play and play and get comfortable and you know just kind of pad a lead at all. These guys are going 100%, 110% out there the entire time. Actually one thing to note is that Anthony and I actually played together uh, a while back on a tournament team to walk the All-Star. And Anthony actually played with me in a week there and he performed phenomenally. Also, if they can figure out their positions, they can figure out some strategy, which they've had problems in the past, you know, not really being able to adapt on the field, they can get that down. I think these guys would be staying on top of the podium. You know, one of my personal uh, picks to, to do very, very well this season, if they can keep it together, though. That's one very important thing to watch out for. All right. So it's a, it's a good team to watch for. We'll see how they do. Um, I think we've got another interview for you. Uh, Rick, it's out to you. Take it away. Thanks, guys. I'm actually here with Dylan right now of the Milwaukee Bears. Whoa. Oh, hold on a second here. Oh, and I'm also I'm also being joined by Hobbs of Team Awesome here. Now, guys, uh, you guys are forming some very uh, new teams here, uh, the Milwaukee Beers and the Team Awesome, respectively. Team Awesome, uh, no, most notably, coming from the CMP free agent session here. Guys, have you started working on some strategies here? Uh, Dylan, we'll start with you. No. All right, and now we're going to go to Hobbs here. Hobbs of Team Awesome, once again, you're a brand new leader, completely new at this. Uh, what are the strategies and game plans going into week one here? Well, I like to implement the pincer tactic, which uh, is totally secret and nobody's ever heard of it. So nobody's going to see it coming. Sounds good. Now, uh, you guys here also uh, team awesome, a little bit of unknown. What's uncertainty? What's going to be going on in your roster? Milwaukee beers are still a lot of, uh, you know, the, the, the secret is still intact as to who actually is going to be on your team here. Have you been uh, kind of figuring out your roles and your positions for everybody on your team? Absolutely. My girlfriend, she likes to distract and that's what she's going to do. Me and Andy, we rock and roll. His brother, he rocks and rolls. 
And there's Eric. That's it. Uh, and Hobbs, what about you? Now, uh, like I said, once again, new team leader. A lot of a lot of people worried about uh, if you'll be able to, f to designate the strengths and weaknesses of your uh, team. What do you have to say about that? Well, we have a very big guy on our team, so we're definitely going to be using him as a shield a lot. And then um, the rest of us are just awesome, so it works. All right, sounds great. Uh, back to you boys in the office. Uh, what we just saw was Team Awesome and the Milwaukee Beers. Uh, Two uh, a little bit unknown teams to us. We actually don't know their full rosters. Um, Milwaukee Beers has uh, Dylan and Andy, who've been with us for quite a while in these tournaments. And uh, their team partially got third place at our uh, Horny Goat tournament, but it was uh, without Dylan. They actually called their, their team uh, Where's Dylan? So uh, I don't know what Dylan will do as an in as a, uh, addition to that team. And uh, Team Awesome came from our free agent session. Uh, they're a bit of a uh, mashed up team. We'll see uh, how they do. How do you, what do you think of these two uh, unknowns? Well, it's really hard to actually kind of figure out and talk about these teams much with so many unknown variables about them still. Uh, team Awesome, like you said, came out of the free agent session. They're a mixed mash uh, group of players. I do believe they actually finalized with six players on their team. The only ones we know concrete for right now would be uh, their team leader, Hobbs, and uh, Roman, who you constantly see around here playing all the time. Uh, an interesting note about Team Awesome is that they, for the most part, are all players who are completely new to this tournament scene from what we know so far. So but uh, despite that, uh, obviously since they showed up to our free agent session, they're, they're players that really wanted to get into this scene. And uh, I, had a, I had a chance to talk to Roman a bit, and he, uh, he really looks forward to this season as a sort of... Uh, at the, at the very least, a practice to get into this sort of thing, to get better at his game, and uh, for his team to, to just get a little better. Mm -hmm. Def definitely. Their, their expect expectations as a team, they said they just really want to work together, get everything figured out, and if they can play and place, do well at every single event, you know, they're going to be happy with that. But definitely, they're going to really try to come together and figure it out. One big thing to watch out for for Team Awesome is that their leader, Hobbs, is actually going to be completely new to the tournament team. He's not a very long time player either, but he's somebody who's going to be taking that role as a leader. So as a new leader, he's going to have to really figure out the strengths and weaknesses of every player on his team, figure out some positions, also strategies going into the tournaments. It's going to be tough for him, but uh, I will say that Hobbs has a certain excitement about it that... Uh, should help them in this. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I think we've seen some pretty interesting teams today. Uh, that's all we have for you. We'll see you guys out in the arena. Oh, yeah. Bye.